Hello, I hope you've had a good week and looking forward to a little bit of rest this weekend. Uh, today we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 8, which is called Pursuing Wisdom. I want to start off by asking you a question. Are you constantly searching for something? Do you always ask yourself, uh, what should I do? Um, if you're fixing to make a big purchase, do you pray about it or do you just... Do you research it or do you just go out and kind of make the purchase on a whim? Um, if you actually sort through all you know, research the things that you can find out about the purchase and gather all that information and then make your decision, then you're using a little wisdom in making your decision. But if you pray about it, then you're using God to help you make that decision. True knowledge comes from an understanding of God's nature and our human frailty. That's Proverbs 1-7. And wisdom rests upon those truths, which is Proverbs 9-10. If we take what we know and use our God knowledge and use our wisdom and seek God, then we can gain true wisdom. God promises to give us wisdom if we ask him for it. Proverbs 1 through 9, the first nine chapters, is a literary unit in which in each one of these chapters, Solomon is addressing his son, and he's trying to help his son understand some very important issues about life. Um, first of all, he admonishes his son to continue living in the way that his parents have taught him. And he then he tells him to avoid any kind of wicked companions. And then he tells him to shun adultery. And he gives him some very graphic teachings as to how to avoid being um, seduced by a married woman. Now, these nine chapters can be very poetic, and they can also be very figurative. And sometimes abstract ideas are, you, are described through or used, personification is used. Personification is when you take something that does not live and you give it a living characteristic. If I take this highlighter and I talk about it as though it was writing the letter or it was telling a message, then I have personified that highlighter. So in this chapter, wisdom is personified as a woman. And we want to look at this chapter in realizing that true wisdom comes from God and it's practical and it's worth searching for. Okay, let's look at the first 11 verses of chapter 8. Does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on the top of the high hill beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance, uh, at the, entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O oh, you simple ones, understand prudence. And you fools, be, as, be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things. But my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands, and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. Okay, so what exactly is being said in these 11 verses? Well, first of all, the first six verses is personifying wisdom as a woman. And this woman, or wisdom, is walking throughout a marketplace. Now, as I read this and I studied all the comments or comment commentaries that had been made on it, it brought to me like you're walking at what would be a festival, uh, let's say Matthew's Alive, 
And there's people that are honking at their wares and they're trying to get your attention. And some of them are calling very loudly. And wisdom doesn't have a booth at this place. Um, but instead, she roams throughout. And she's roaming around in the community to wherever people congregate. Now, she calls for these people. She calls from the high hills so that they might hear her. So perhaps she's sitting up above calling down to them. She's calling to them from the path that they might travel. Um, as they roam through the marketplace, there's choices to be made. Do they turn right? Do they go turn left? Do they go straight? And so she's trying to direct them on the path that they should go on. She's also calling to them from the gates of the city. And as she calls to them at the gates through the city, perhaps she's trying to direct them down the right path. Perhaps she's trying to warn them of going down the wrong way. And she's trying to give them the wisdom. She's also calling from the, to them from the doorways. And as she calls to them, she's wanting to give them advice or to warn them should they enter. Now, when we look at verse 5, she's trying to speak to two different groups. First of all, she's trying to address those that are, are naive. Now, you know someone who's naive. They'll believe anything you tell them. If you told them that the sun was going to come up with a rainbow around it this morning, they would believe you. They're very naive as to the facts of the world. So she's addressing those. And the others she's addressing are the fools. Because the fools, they ignore any kind of understanding. One Bible translation says, it's the NLT, says, you simple people, use good, use good judgment. You foolish people, show some understanding. So she's trying to get the foolish people to show understanding. Well, then when we start the next few verses, we see God speaking to us. And God makes us a promise. And he promises us that everything that he says to us would be excellent. Everything he says to us would be right. Everything he says to us would be true. He would not ever tell us some half-truths. Sometimes we're guilty of maybe telling a half-truth, but not God. There would never be any deception that comes from God. There would never be anything crooked or perverse that comes from God because God is righteous and what he speaks is righteous. Now, in verse 7, it says that wisdom assures people that her mouth tells the truth. Okay, God is truth. People can use their speech to either help or to use hurt. Or to be hurtful. You know, we always heard the old adage, Spe uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never harm me. That's not true. That is the absolutely not true. Because words can hurt you to the point that you, it's very difficult to, to forget those words or to overcome those words. And so James 3.10 says, blessings and cursing comes out of the same mouth. But it should not be this way. You can speak words to encourage someone, or you can speak words to discourage someone. You can speak words of kindness, or you can speak words of unkindness. You can speak words gently, or you can speak words harshly. And I could go on and on, but you understand that the good words or the bad words both come from the same mouth. Now, let's look at a comparison of wisdom and wickedness, because that's what the next verses does, is it, it kind of does a comparison. Wisdom is excellent things. Wisdom is right things. Wisdom is truth. It's helpful. Ruth, uh, wisdom is plain to anyone who tries to understand. 
Wisdom is right to those who find knowledge. Wisdom is right in any attitude or actions. Wisdom is always pleasing to God. So are you truthful? Are you kind? Are you pleasing to God? Is the things that you say plain so that others can understand what you're trying to say? Are your attitudes positive? Are your actions pleasing to God? Do we walk the walk and not just talk the talk? It's easy to talk the talk, but it's much more difficult to walk the walk. Now, let's look at the opposite of that. Wickedness. It's crooked. We had see plenty of people who are crooked today in their dealings, in their businesses, in whatever they do. Wickedness is perverse. It's deceptive. People who would tell you they would do something and then not do it or not do it correctly. Wickedness distorts the truth. How many times do we hear people taking the truth and twisting it, making it the way they want it to be instead of the way it was intended to be, especially during this election time? We're seeing constant deception of which the truth is being twisted. Wickedness is even twisting God's truth. And unfortunately, Christians and ministers are guilty of twisting God's truth and making it to be what they want it to be and not what it should be. And wickedness is also destructive ways. So which should we follow? I think that's very easy to see. And then we get into verse 9. And it talks about folly. Now, folly has something to do with your character more than your intelligence. And when a person shows folly, they make very self-destructive choices. So now we have a comparison between folly and between wisdom. So if we look at folly, hmm, the person who shows folly is very self-centered. Do you know that person that everything in life is about them? If you try to talk to them about something you're doing, they're going to turn the conversation to talk about themselves. If you try to tell them that you're dealing with um, a bad situation in life, they're going to turn the conversation and their situation is worse than yours. If you try to tell them even that you've gone out to eat, at a nice restaurant. They're going to tell you about a restaurant that's nicer than the one you went to and their meal was much better than the meal you had. They're very self-centered. On the opposite side, they're very obstinate. They're extremely hard to get along with. As my mama used to say, they're the person that would argue with the signpost and then pull up and argue with the hoe. They're also very gullible. Because they're foolish. They don't have the wisdom that they need to make good decisions. So therefore, they'll listen to anybody and be gullible. They're greedy. They think everything is material. And so they want more and more and more to find that happiness that a greedy person is constantly searching. And they reject the guidance of true wisdom. Because if they accepted true wisdom, then they wouldn't have any of these. They wouldn't be so self-centered. They wouldn't be so stubborn. They wouldn't be so gullible. And they wouldn't be so greedy. Now, on the opposite spectrum is wisdom. Wisdom has forthright. It can see what's going to happen because it has stopped and it has studied the situation and figured out the best way to go. It is desirable. Because, again, it's trying to find the right path to go on. And wisdom shows truth. And that is something that we all want. Knowledge refers to a relationship with people or relationship with objects. But as a person meditates on what God's Word says and really tries to understand what God's word says, then wisdom can become more apparent. 
Now, we kind of change a little bit, and we look at verse 10, and it talks about some precious metals. Gold is mentioned more than any other metal in the Bible, and silver is second. Now, when we think about what gold and silver can be used for, we can think about the positive things that it can be used for. It could be used for jewelry. It could be used for utensils. It could be used for coinage. It could be used for many other positive things. But it can also be used for idols. Remember when Moses was up on the mountain and all of the gold was collected and the golden calf was erected for the people to worship? So, again, gold and silver could be used for good or for bad. The value of God's instruction is more important than silver, gold, or rubies, verse 11 says. The value of his instruction must not only be heard up here, but it must be applied here. And there's a big difference. We must receive God's instructions as most important. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So what's more important? Silver and gold or God's kingdom and his righteousness? Wisdom reproves bad behavior and it instills godly behavior. If we learn God's truth concerning his expectations, that's more important than gaining silver or gold so that we're not in our old age like Scrooge sitting and counting all of our money but the most unhappy person that could ever be found. God's wisdom can always be trusted as being true. We can get material possessions. They can be exploited they can be squandered. They can be used in wrongful ways. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to acquire material possessions. I never would say that. I'm just saying that things can be exploited. Think about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Where did he tell us to lay up our treasures? In heaven, because where our treasures are, there will be our heart also. Okay, let's look at verses 12 through 16. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, all the judges of the earth. Okay, what can we gain from here? First of all, God's wisdom is astute and it's resourceful. One person said, prudence and wisdom go hand in hand. Well, then what is prudence? Prudence means you have discretion in what you do. You make careful judgments. So if you're making careful judgments and using discretion, then of course you're using wisdom. Wisdom teaches a person to live a prudent, in other words, to think about what you're doing and to be careful and make good judgments, to be intelligent in what you're doing, and these will help you live a harmonious life. In Proverbs 1, 7, Solomon stated that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. In Proverbs 9, 10, he said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So if we're in a right relationship with God, we love him and we hate evil. If we fear the Lord, we reject all actions that oppose his character. And if we're using godly wisdom, then we reject pride, we, re we reject evil conduct, and we reject speech that is not pleasing to God. 
whether that's vocabulary or whether that's hurtful speech. Do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Can you control what's going to happen tomorrow? Can you control the circumstances that surround you? Well, of course not. But we can't abandon that. Instead, we have to look at God for giving us guidance. Wisdom gives us good advice, and it also gives us a way for godly living. It allows us to have understanding. It allows us to have strength, and it allows us to be victorious over adverse circumstances. In verses 15 through 16, Wisdom is applied to all leaders. All leaders should seek God's guidance in every decision that they make. At the beginning of his reign, Solomon prayed, Give your servant a receptive heart to judge your people and to discern good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? This showed that the Lord was a source of all wisdom. Now, did Solomon use that advice? Of course he didn't. He became disobedient, and because of his disobedience, his kingdom was divided. When he died, civil war disrupted, and his kingdom was divided into two separate parts. So God's wisdom comes through fearing him, and it's more sufficient for it than any problems we could ever face. Okay, let's look at our last verses, 17 through 21. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasures. Wisdom is available to those who seek it. What does Matthew 7, 7 and 8 say? say Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. So if we seek wisdom and we have the faith that God will give us the wisdom, then the wisdom will be granted. Now, when we look at riches and assets and everything, wisdom enables us to use those in a good way. It, wisdom enables us to take those riches and to use them for our benefit and for the benefit of others. So wisdom helps us to use our wealth and our spiritual wealth in a manner that is pleasing to God. When it talks about gold and silver, we've already talked about how gold and silver were not as important as wisdom to anyone, but gold and silver were used in commerce, and it was available for almost any commodity. Yet, the fruit of harvest of wisdom outclassed even these precious metals, which was used to buy or to sell anything. When material wealth becomes the sole objective of one's life, it corrupts that individual and it causes him or her to miss out on what is truly valuable. The pursuit of wisdom always follows God's path. Wisdom produces a way of life that holds to ethical behavior and impartiality. It is a lifestyle that leads to a wholesome existence because it's from God, and everything that's from God is righteous, is truth, it's not deceptive, it's everything that is pleasing. So let us seek wisdom in everything that we do in this life. Let us close in a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you for this lesson and for reminding us that wisdom comes from you. Lord, we need to seek your wisdom about every decision that we make. 
Sometimes we forget, and often we make foolish mistakes because we haven't prayed for wisdom that comes from you. Lord, let us remember that whatever we have, it con- it came from you. You gave us the intelligence. You gave us the ability to use our hands to work. But we have to seek you for wisdom in how to use whatever we have. Lord, I thank you for this class and for the wisdom that is in this class. And Lord, I thank you for the guidance that they have given me and that they continue to offer to others each day. I ask you, Lord, to just give us wisdom as we go through each day that we may live a life that's more pleasing to you and that it will always be honorable and above reproach. For it's in your most precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, how we do? Uh, it was right at twenty six minutes. That's I didn't good. Look at the time. Yeah. That's a, that's a good number. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, did you push this button?